bird or not. All right, what the heck? All right. Where That's am I? Yes, I definitely need to do screen share if we're going to get through any of your things. Presentations. That's what they're called. Right, 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 right. Right. So let me get kind of a view. Uh, Soma. Uh, Then got Leah and Sydney and Jennifer Allen. The fuck? Callie and Blake and Danielle and Kennedy and Callie. And that's kind of pretty much who I was sort of expecting. I can leave it here for a little while. You see if any more come in. Oh, should I though? That's the second bell. So does that, should, should I be really mean and say, Lucy, you're not here? And uh, did I see Danielle? Yeah, there's Danny L. Oh, maybe Lucy is here. I got more pages to go. I saw Julia. Saw, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, 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 okay. So, do, 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 do. No, Chloe. Can I move my... Uh, Brady Bunch thing there, and I did not see a Sam, which she can work on your book, their stuff. Okay, so, um, Allie, I got gotcha. you. Uh, I don't, today I don't have anything separate to, to talk to you about or say to you. Just check on Schoology because um, we do have two more assignments. Did I ever have you? Yeah, you took the first quiz already. So anyway, so there's a picture assignment. There's no assignment for an upcoming uh, um, quiz for you. Everybody else, right? What to say? You got a plan book and the plan book is going to say, it's going to say that we are still, yeah, right? And depending on how quickly we get through these presentations, uh, the quiz is supposed to be Wednesday. I don't know if your first or second art teachers have told you this or not, but Mr. Bersamli is planning on us being back in person. Uh, there's a majority of us at Blake back in person on, uh, on Wednesday. He really wants just these two days for contact tracing. And of course, the governor doesn't believe that any school should be hybrid. They should all be on a bed in person all the time and don't shut down. So let me get us into where those are. I'm assuming you've had more than enough time since they were due, like last Monday. So if you're in my, um, not in my submitted pile, but in my in-progress pile, you're still for a game. So I hope that you're done or as done as you can be. Now, uh, depending on how well this works, because there's a little bit of lag, not only is every teacher on campus using uh, Zoom right now, a kid in South City and Dunlap, pretty much. I did not hit yearbook. I hit commercial art. See what it takes me to. So anyway, we're having bandwidth issues. Um, but it did go to commercial art. So I'll go into uh, true design. And um, here's what we'll do. Okay, so be ready for me to call on you. Um, ready to take some notes, just like you we were last week in class. Yep. You, uh, I think, not even. I don't want to edit. I don't want to unpublish. I want to grade. Well, I have to go into the grading part. Dang it. Hmm. Oh, dear. Mallory knows what he's doing. I actually click on the assignment. Click through. So, if I choose yours and call on you and you can hear me, unmute yourself and talk through your presentation. And this shouldn't be that hard. Uh, now, 
in the chat, in the group chat, tell us if you can't hear them, if they need to get closer to their microphone. By the way, everybody hear me okay? Yeah. Okay. Second hour told me there's some lag, and I'm seeing that um, my little video is not doing what I am doing. I'll get us out of the way. Oh, this worries me. Is that me or is it you? Sally's gone. Leah's gone. Matthew's gone. That's you, buddy. Kennedy. Oh, did we not finish Reagan and Reagan start? Um, no. That Reagan is not with us, and I failed to count her as absent. Who should go first, Kennedy or Reagan? Knock, knock. JFK. Here you JFK. go, Kennedy. Got her. Please unmute yourself. Why am I going again? I went. I went. Yeah, last she was. Time. She went last time. Ooh. Say morning, Kennedy. Morning, oh, son of a beast. I mean, yeah, she got a twenty-one. Guys, I'm gonna be sad if I'm having technical difficulties with you on an assignment that should be easy peasy because it's already all online. Kennedy already went. Kennedy, why didn't you tell me this? I did try to tell you. So we're picking on somebody else. But I got a grade, Kennedy. Can't be Reagan because Reagan is in here. Danny. Danielle, my dear. Jesse's already. Oh, Danielle's already gone. Julie is here. I saw ya. I know you're here. Julia. You unmute yourself. And if you're really, really embarrassed. And we're just going to have to have Steven encourage you. Okay. Nice call in your gym back there, Matthew. Okay. Who should be Julius? Julia, can you say something so I know you're there? Hi. Hello? Hmm. Well, hopefully you can tell us about Noma Bar. Ooh. I like your front cover here. Hmm. Obviously, we're still dragging. Yo, Mr. Mallory. Mr. Mallory. Tell you what, I don't know if it's going to help us or not because, as I said, the whole school is on Zoom right now. But if everybody would turn their cameras off, uh, Julia, it's optional to you. We're looking at your, your slideshow here in a second and not looking at you. But Julia, if you would unmute yourself and try to find your microphone on your computer. Here. That'd be huge help. Because I know, like, Kennedy would have rather I just done her presentation for her, but you know, you got this. Assuming it ever opens. <laughs> Yay. Okay, so the name is, is there one R or two? Um, one. Just Norma Bar, one R. Yeah. Um, he was born in 1973. Anybody here, Julia, because I cannot. He was born in 1973, and he is an Israeli illustrator, and he's known for his negative space posters. Well, I'll leave this up here for a little bit for you to write this down. No, you thought Noma was a guy, a girl, didn't you? Noma is a guy. Noma is a fantastic illustrator. Since our first assignment has to deal with uh, illustration, 
you may want the binomial bar. Um, yeah, it's, it's not much younger than me. He is from Israel, and his big thing is positive and negative space. Uh, so I will work more on positive and negative space when we get into um, uh, logos. But if you don't remember much about positive and negative space from uh, junior high art, um, you really owe it to yourself. I don't know, look up a, a YouTube tutorial video or just some random pictures to help you learn the concept. But maybe you're going to learn some of the concepts right here from Noma. So he's known for negative space. He's done over 100 magazine colors. And as of 2007, 20, 20, 000, 2007, he finished a book called Guess Who, which would be a fun book to write. So guess who? I love how nobody unmutes themselves. Maybe I just can't hear any of you. I'm sorry. You're being, is that the right answer? You, you get the Einstein right. He's probably just as old as Charlie Chaplin, so you may not know him. This guy you may not know. And he's more modern. It's an HBO series. It went, it was huge. It was one of the first things that people used to like to uh, uh, watch. It's called The Sopranos. So that would be Tony Soprano, kind of a heavy set guy like me, only without the beard. And his eyebrow and nose are a gun because he's a, he's a mob guy, mob boss in New Jersey. I'm not sure why this guy's mustache is the United States, but I'm pretty sure those are missiles and this is the little North Korean guy. Am I right? Matt, am I right? Okay. Has it been up here long enough? I feel really bad that uh, I'm not having Julia do the talking. I've seen from colleagues in that teach in other states that this is what you face when you're teaching on Zoom. Okay, here's the next page. Uh, again, like I often say, you figure out how to summarize or abbreviate. But a lot of this is important. So you probably want to have some of this, okay? It'll it'll show up on the quiz, and if it's important enough that Julia thinks it's interesting or valuable, okay? And I'll I'll read it to you, in that little pandic, the cutest, uh, and cat, dog, and mouse it might take me for a while to find the mouse, right? And uh, tortoise and the hare. And of course, maybe you like horror movies. You see how it, it is so really simple, but um, he's he's evoking. Uh, like I'm always talking about the invoke, evoke, and provoke. The evoke is to tap into your unconscious and what your experience has been, or what are your memories. So he uses images that are very evocative, but he puts them in through negative space, which is a little sneaky. So you really, it's a puzzle. Your brain has to work, okay? They end up just being, really being powerful. They stick with you. You're probably gonna remember some of these. At any rate, so from some of his early uh, education, he went to the Cal, I'm probably not putting that right, Academy of Art and Design, which I assume is in Israel. Maybe it's in Tel Aviv or Jerusalem or some other city. He started doing art as a kid, and he tried to draw his teachers. Feel free. Would you feel free to? Uh, maybe um, you're afraid to because you think your teachers are going to be offended. You don't have to show anybody but me. If you're afraid to draw any of your other teachers, go you know go ahead and draw me. It's practice. Okay. Um, uh, it might even be a good for any of our assignments in here, including illustration. If you got a bunch of the teachers or all of the teachers, you know, we could even use that in yearbook. I don't think it's too late, but 
Okay, anyway, so he was drawing his teachers. He uh, grew up in Israel, but he moved to London in 2000. And when he was a kid, sometimes he made sculptures with his neighbor. He made sculptures out of spare farm equipment. So I'm assuming that maybe he's up in Nottingshire or something. He's not in London itself. But you've seen that, right? We got lots of those kind of things around here. People that make a dinosaur out of uh, old uh, uh, tractor parts and and uh, chickens out of uh, cut up augers and and uh, you know whatever. I've done it. I have uh, a pig that I welded together out of. Um, I don't even remember what part of it was a carburetor, I think, it's in my in-laws yard. Okay, I can see how that might inspire somebody, right? Ah, okay. Russian constructivism is a school of art. We don't talk about it or teach it a whole lot here in the West, especially the United States, because Cold War, Soviet Union, this Russian constructivism was used for political it's it's cool looking. Uh, I think that Barry, uh, much of his stuff is inspired by Russian constructivism. So put those two words together and then the word art in a Google search and you might find something that you like. Charlie Chaplin is a writer, comedian, director, as you probably know. And I, to my knowledge, he's not an artist, although there are a lot of uh, uh, actors and filmmakers that make art. Saul Saul Bass, maybe the case, he definitely is a commercial artist. And uh, if nobody's doing a, a, a presentation on him, maybe you search his name because he had a lot of interesting stuff in the 60s. Okay, well, I don't know. You're either gonna have to unmute yourself or uh, and shout or put something in the text, in the group text, if you need this slide up longer, because I'm moving on. You got what you need to get? I think I'd say the most important stuff is this bottom part. Okay. Here's some good stuff. Hmm. So, yeah, he had a lot of big influence in um, theater, like movies and Broadway. Uh, you know, entertainment kind of stuff. I don't remember seeing his stuff so much with musicians, but this makes sense. I think I do remember this that um, uh, Julia has found here. That his combination of being a graphic designer and illustrator and using negative space, a lot of his posters uh, have been used uh, for activism for different, and and I'm sure Matt probably. Uh, it doesn't necessarily like some of this, but some of his illustrations will end up in news magazines, for example. So it doesn't mean that he's pro-gun or anti-gun. Remember, this is not an American. He's Israeli. So he he doesn't know, you know, from hole in the ground, our Second Amendment or our whole argument that people have about that. Uh, although it does live in Israel and there's lots of violence there a uh, lot of the protest groups between religions, Muslim and, and Jewish, uh, and there's been the Palestine Liberation Organization and Hamas. And so a wall separating East and West Jerusalem, I think it is. And, and if you've never heard of any of that uh, or never come across any of that, in a, then you're not doing current events, current events correctly for Ms. Hazy. Um, so, yeah, look at the bottom right one. Using negative space to make it look like a little child with curly hair about around where the trigger is. That's pretty masterful. And um, I don't know, maybe this is pro troops. Their version of the National Guard, well, I shouldn't, I shouldn't even call it National Guard. In Israel, um, they don't have a voluntary military. One sometime between the age of, I don't know if it's, if I'm getting this right, if it's between 16 and 26 or 18 and 22, everybody, it's compulsory, men and women, if you're not drafted, everyone, just as part of life, has to do at least two year term in, in the military. 
find the heart. Maybe you found it already, and you think I'm stupid. But you know, and the the rifleman, the sniper, in his arms. And isn't that contrast? Um, I guess the word I want to bring up is is cognitive dissonance. I'm sorry, I know it's not psych class. I'm not trying to talk over your head, but that is where you have. You're, you're grappling with two things that can both be true or one thing that you just can't believe, you know, um, it, it makes you think, makes you feel. You know, is this somebody that loves guns and they're out shooting pheasants and deer and pigeons and they're in their shooting sports? I'm not sure that's the point that he was trying to get at. But now... And you see, I, I think the dead guy with his tongue sticking out and bleeding is easy in that one. But can you see what's going on in this one? You almost might have to like zoom, and it's not going to let me because we're on zoom. See the mountain and the camo and the sun? That's a gun sight, like on a long rifle. Excuse me. So he lives in Israel. He's going to, he is in proximity to, he is nearby uh, Lebanon and Syria and Jordan and uh, um, uh, Iraq and Iran. And um, the Strip is in southern Israel and it's an area where Palestinian Muslims live and they don't have all of the same rights as other Israelis. And it's near the border with Egypt. And so you can see. He's probably going to get into their time in Newsweek or their equivalent in, in the Middle East or in Europe. Cool stuff. You've done a good job so far, Julia. Uh, lasting impact. Here you have a lot of fun. Oh, these are fun. Oh, I get the Silence of the Lambs and, um, oh, what's that chick's name that? Uh, died of an overdose. That's such a good singer. There's a lot, of, a lot of good ones in here. At any rate, he often kept his works really simple and clean so that it could inspire other people to keep things simple and clean. And I would uh, say probably that, um, I don't remember who it was, but it had, oh, I shouldn't remember who it was. Is it Danielle? No, no, no. Who had Chip Kid? Um, Chip Kid. He, he can do really detailed stuff, but he often tried to keep his stuff really simple. Although, uh, this guy, uh, it, boy, way simple. Okay. So, right? you know the red sign with the white bar means do not enter, right? And it's a Muslim woman. She's wearing a hubbub. Okay. Like in the artist kind of thing, because her eye is a paintbrush. Okay. You get the man in the moon, but do you see the person that oh, maybe they're snoring? I just don't know what his deal is with Pickens, though. The motorcycle guy. His face is made out of most, but you see his arm and his helmet. Okay, you're tired of laughing. I mean, you want to get through this. Okay, so this is what Julia tells us. Julia says that she likes that when you look at any of his artworks, you can see several different things. Yeah. She finds it a, a little interesting because some people might see some things that other people wouldn't. Yeah. And like a lot of puzzles, what do you see first? Does that say something about you or your personality or your life experiences? Um, but that's a very cool point. A lot of different shapes. We get, um, is that an American Eagle or is that a Phoenix? Phoenix is a Chinese character. My guess is that this guy is the director or the choreographer, and she's the dancer. And what major industry does this one have to do with? 
that's when I start talking like Adam Sandler. It's for your entertainment purposes. Yeah, it's a big, huge ship. There's a little smaller ship, and there's a fish. You probably got it. I, 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 li- I like him for the same reasons. Good job, Julia. Okay. So, uh, we are pert near. Should we have the boyfriend go? Yeah, let's take the boyfriend go. Since Julia went. Uh, it is now 1010 and you're here for 1027. So I guarantee that we can get him. Uh, let's quickly see who has to finish stuff up and just hit submit. Would you just hit submit? So Lucy, you can do this. Callie, you're in photography and not in commercial art, so you don't have to do it. Son of a beast. You know what I think just happened to us? You're all still there. Okay. I was thinking for a minute what might have happened to us is that uh, uh, Zoom was ending the meeting. And I know, stop laughing, Jesse and Matthew. I know you think it's funny that we wouldn't have to see our our last, uh, we wouldn't have to see Jeff's assignment because we don't have enough time. What are, what are you talking right. about, Will? You know, let's try. Willis. <laughs> Let's get back into commercial art and Schoology. See if I can get back to that assignment. What are you talking about, Bill Willis? Slideshow. Lord knows how long it's going to take or how fast it'll go. Uh, So now can you, Stephen, really? Oh, no, everybody's there. Okay, good. Thanks. I I know. I trust y'all. Okay. Maybe Stephen. Uh, I'll, if I unmute you or you please try to unmute it'd be better if you were narrating your own presentation instead of me plus I think all your classmates don't think it's fair that Julia weaseled out of it I'm not blaming you I'm not thinking you weasel, literally weaseled out of it Julia I'm not I, you're not but uh, Julia Oh, yeah, well, I will take a look at those in progress tomorrow because I, I recognize that not all of those are people that uh, do a terrific job of coming to class when we're not online. So um, be ready for this quiz on Wednesday. Uh, I don't think I would give you the quiz tomorrow, even if I give up on those four people. Uh, but I do think that maybe... Uh, you know, expect expect either some notes or some video um, that we can I can introduce you to the actual illustrating in person and in class. And I could just press this button right away. Oh, I can kind of see why you might like this dude, Jeffrey. Kind of fits your uh, interests and aesthetics a little bit. Give it a second to open up. Do you have to unmute? Yep. Oh, rookie mistake. Okay, I got Jesse, and maybe I just have to learn how to use. Um, maybe it's my problem with either my laptop or how I'm using sound. Maybe I gotta share sound. I wonder if that'll work. <laughs> Say something again, either either Jesse or or Jeff. Yeah, and so now I can't even see. Before, when I had your little Hi there. Now, tools if you on there, a project like this on the internet, on Amazon, show the visual panel. It told me that someone was talking, but I'm, I can't hear you. And I got my sound turned all the way up. Shoot, shoot, son of a gun. Well, fucking Morgan. Um, let me let me let you know this that um. Steven, 
if you want to annotate anything that I'm talking about, um, why don't you add it in the chat? And uh, Julia, if you have any parting things to say about your last guy, you can add it to the chat. And for everybody, if you um, have any questions for either Julia or for, for Jeff, go ahead and add it to the chat. I'll try and move this around to where it's less destructive, less in our way. So, El Stefan, is that it? Not, not, not Stephen Paul, but El Stefan. That's okay, whatever. So you're writing about Drew Strutman, and as you can see, here's him talking to people at a, a Comic Con. I wonder if it's that the new one in San Diego or if it's the place else, but. Looks to me like he does illustrating for motion pictures. If you haven't seen Blade Runner, yeah. you know, do yourself a favor. You really, you really ought to. Same with uh, Empire Strikes Back. Jedi, nah, it's not, it's not that great. But... So, you know, here's another thing to do in the chat. If everybody else can hear Steven except me. Please say so in the chat that we're not talking at the same time. I need to be I'm embarrassing myself enough this whole thing this week. No, it's not this week yet. It's only Monday. Okay, so uh, Drew stats a little bit about him. He's an old guy. That was mean. Uh, 1947. I remember a uh, year is more important to me. I don't need to know their months and days. So I can't I appreciate that. that you all been putting them in there in your presentation. It's so blurry. We can do so, it. Blurry. Um, blurry than a McFlurry, Mr. Mom. It's not important enough that. for you to actually have to go to the chat to answer it. But I'm curious as to whether Oregon City is an Oregon. Mr. Mallory. But we want to know that he's yeah. an American. Does he can and you? really, even though that's the information that you're probably going to put in Third slide. Oh, I'm sorry. You're gonna put in the chat, huh? Movie posters. Okay, so still leave it on here just for a little bit for you to. Be we able to get, can't uh, read it, Jim. For you to be able to get their names and their dates. Well, let uh, me move. Try and move this. Whoa! You can't read or see it. No. We'll be trying. So. Oh, you read that? You read it, you. Mr. Mallory. It should be. Mouth. It should. Be. I'm sharing my screen, therefore I'm sharing it. Give me a T. Now. Give me an A. Hurry, Ted. Where are you at? Oh, that's weird. <laughs> hmm. Well, I will read to you again slowly. Drew Stresman. S T R U Z A N. Uh, born in 1947, Oregon City, is an American illustrator, and he's famous for his movie posters. Perhaps I'm going to end up having to share the slideshow with everybody and not just the video of us presenting said slideshow to Alice. Do you know Alice Cooper is from Phoenix? He's older than me, so I can't say I grew up with him. It's from my hometown. So, if you were in class, and again, this is probably not important enough for, uh, for you to add to the chat. If you were in class, I'd ask you, which art center, college of design? My guess is it's going to be one in Los Angeles. Not that can be wrong. Um, Cal Arts, and this is a tangent, it's nothing with your oh assessment. My God. Uh, that on. is a really good art and design school Hi, if you man. ever want to look into it. Um, it, it's, it was founded by, by Disney. Not not the same as Art Center College of Design, not sure where that is. Some of his influences. Well, that's weird. Bill Cosby. Um, I'm not sure why I haven't heard of Bob Peek and Baron's story. I guess I got to do some, some research. 
Casey. I've heard of. I'm trying to remember why. Um, okay. Start of his career. Welcome to my nightmare by Alice Cooper. Alice Cooper is this. I don't know. We were also scared of some of the heavy metal stuff in the 70s, especially if you were like, you know, only nine years old in 1979. But, um, even though Ozzy Osbourne is probably an alcoholic and maybe recovering from a lot of other drugs, Alice Cooper is all showman. He came off as being totally evil and wicked and scary, and uh, he's, no, it's just, he's just, I don't know why he's Alice, but he's just, a, he's the nicest guy in person. You know what I mean? <laughs> okay, I've never met him. I'm just saying, interviews. Uh, some of his major contributions. Well, yeah, you can't be a Gen Xer and not have uh, probably had a few of his posters on your walls or had him on covers of different magazines that, that you've had. So it says here, and I'm talking too fast. So I will slow down. Sorry about that, Leah. According to Jeff's slide no, I'm joking according to Jeff's slide show um, he's most known for movie posters and some of the ones that he is most known for uh, out of the 150 and that's a lot so he's done he's done a lot of because it's not like you whip this out in 10 minutes these are all real paintings and then they get reproduced over and over again as posters at any rate so 150. And therefore, the Star Wars movies, the Back to the Future movies, and the Indiana Jones movies. Okay. And, and I, yeah, I think I, I don't know if I bought it from a store or if I got it in a magazine and unfolded it, but uh, the first Raiders movie came out in like 82. I was like in sixth grade, I think. And I, I was oh. So I, I like this Drew Stutzman style. At least I did when I was a kid. Okay. I hope I'm talking slower. Now tell me if I should leave the slide up. I think it's been up pretty long. Right? Hopefully it's not as blurry as it was. But again, when you think about those three trilogies, uh, over the course of the 1980s and 90s, though there's some of the best movies ever that I got to make posters for. So, lasting impact. Does he influence other illustrators? Yeah, probably. He's influenced on a lot of artists because he actually made it big with his art. So here's a quote from an interview. Ooh. Nice job, Stephen. Who does that in their slideshows? Good for you. Movies like Star Wars, Indiana Jones, and Back to the Future played big. And that holds every one of these connected really tight to the art of Drew Strutzman. And people are, they like it, and they're inspired by it. Um, and... You know, nowadays, maybe these pictures are a little lost. Uh, if they're not saved on the DVDs, or nobody does DVDs, since everybody streams movies now. Um, but if and when movie theaters open up again, they keep a lot of their old movie posters, so you might see some of these around. Uh, you ask your parents about Goonies. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, so this is true. Um, when you think about it, think about uh, music. You know, uh, legacy of John Williams with uh, Star Wars and um, uh, Indiana Jones. Uh, I wish I could remember the name of uh, the, there's a couple of different musical composers right now that like were involved with all of the Marvel movies. You know, uh, I can hear to the future, even if I can't hum it back to you, I can hear it in my head without having to think much or see the movie. So, visually, chances are these kind of things probably do that same sort of thing. 
put the chat here over here by Hellboy. So Jeffrey says, likes the colors, emphasis on the uh, characters. I also think that he's famous from doing well. Should be famous. So you now know his name. Did you know his name before? It's a rhetorical question. I know I can't hear you, so I guess you don't have to necessarily answer that. Uh, to me, I can take a second. Uh, and this is done. And we'll, we'll wrap it up. Don't worry. I know I talk too much. But um, I, I want you to be learning. And I want you, so I want you to look. Look, look at these five images for a second. And what do they have in common? Okay, because that is what you would call or you might read as the artist style. And so if I made an analogy for you, you look at the old original series Star Trek, you look at the old um, 1990s um, next generation Star Trek, uh, and you're looking at the new Star Trek on CBS. All three of them look a little different. But what uh, none of them have is what that reboot movie uh, that uh, the same guy that did the, um, the very last Star Wars movie. When you want somebody's name, you can't remember it. Um, you saw the, the first of the three in that trilogy, new Star Trek movies. You see these lens flares, you know, weird lighting all over the place, reflection lighting, you know, hitting, hitting the lens. And that's kind of his style as a director. Well, look. Look at these posters. They all look a little like the backlit, right? Like the characters are glowing, uh, which makes it pretty dramatic. Uh, they all uh, look a little bit hazy, like they're supposed to be a little bit blurry or like there's like some uh, polyam jelly on the lens of the motion picture camera or a fog pipe in. You know? And they all really emphasize some, some highlights, you know, like the light on the side of Hellboy's face or Indiana Jones's face or, or uh, Martin and um, Ian Pack's uh, uh, sunglasses or Harry Potter's eyes or his glasses, definitely Darth Vader's helmet. You know, the kind of glowy sort of look is definitely in this particular artist's, um, what do you call it? style. There's the bell. I'll let you go. Your fourth hour class is going to start at 1030. See you tomorrow. Hmm.